Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest Swine Health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. And joining me for this week's episode is Dr. Juliana Bonin Fajeda. Dr. Fajeda is a clinical assistant professor at North Carolina State University. Uh, Juliana, thank you very much for coming on the podcast. It's a pleasure to have you on here. Um, Just in case there are folks out there that have not had the pleasure of meeting you, why don't you give them a little bit of background on yourself? Uh, Thank you. Thank you for inviting me uh, to participate in the podcast. So um, as Dr. Clayton just said, like I'm uh, Juliana and I'm with the College of Veterinary Medicine uh, as a clinical assistant professor. I'm originally from Brazil where I got my DVM. Um, I did a master's in uh, epidemiology applied to zoonosis, and uh, after that I worked for the public health department for a while uh, back home, and then I I did like a DVSC program in swine health uh, and production at the University of Guelph in Ontario, Canada. Excellent. A full value relationship starts with understanding your business, and Alanco knows growing the healthiest pig requires focus on every segment of production. Through continuous innovation, trusted solutions, and actionable insights, Elanco is invested in helping you achieve the full value of every decision. Their portfolio offers solutions that manage disease challenges, minimize variation, and mitigate mortality to optimize pig health. Get full value from start to finish with Elanco. And uh, Juliana, as I understand it, you have some flu research that you have done and are here today to to educate us a little bit about what goes on with influenza in growing pigs. And and specifically, you did a longitudinal study, so tested the same pigs over and over again of individual pigs that were naturally infected with at least one strain of influenza, but sometimes maybe more than one strain. And you looked at the, the diagnostic status of those pigs over time. Were they infected or not infected from like weaning all the way to market? Why don't you talk to us a little bit about your study and at a high level, what did you see in terms of those infection dynamics, the natural infection dynamics of influenza post weaning? Um, Okay. So, yeah. So the title like of the whole project was like the dynamics of influenza virus transmissions in swine herds and analysis of the risk factors for some recurrent infections. Uh, when we started like the project, like so we had like a few questions that we want answered. Uh, one of them was like, can we have animals infected with the same virus like on multiple occasions? Uh, the second one was, can we have like multiple viruses circulating at the same time in a relatively small population? And the third one was like, do they circulate at the same time? So we were trying to answer those questions with uh, our study. So uh, we had like a few objectives, of course. Uh, The primary ones was to describe the patterns of uh, influenza circulation in nursery herds and also identify like determinants of uh, influenza A virus positivity in nursery pigs. So I think um, uh, probably the first question that comes to mind for me, Juliana, is um, did the infection with an individual pig play out like you would expect? Like we read in the textbook that the pig gets influenza at some point, um, you know, presumably loses maternal antibodies, gets influenza, is infected for a period of time and then clears the virus, but builds its own immunity and the virus is gone. So did you see that with individual pigs where they were maybe negative at weaning, maybe not positive for a few weeks and then recovered and stayed negative forever? Uh, yes, so we saw that, like, so that's what we were call, calling like a recurrent infection. So pigs were positive at a particular week, then they had like a clear period, and then like they were positive again, like on week t- three or four, like after the first one. So that was like a, a recurrent pattern that we saw uh, on, on that farm. And uh, we did like two uh, different studies. So we followed like two cohorts of pigs at two different times. Uh, and we were able to detect like a lot of a large number of viruses, like from H three N two and H one N one, uh, happening at the same time. Uh, first study, the prevalence, uh, the prevalent virus was like H three N two, and the second study we got like more of the H one N one. But it's still, like pigs were getting infected like multiple times uh, over time, and with like a negative dip, a negative period like in between. 
Was there any vaccine used in either the sow farms that produced these pigs uh, with the sows or maybe in the growing pigs themselves? Any flu vaccine that was used? Yes. So uh, for the first study, uh, sows were vaccinated like with a commercial vaccine. Uh, and like that's when we had like the prevalence like of the H3 and 2 going on. Uh, and for the second study, we got like sows vaccinated like with an autogenous vaccine for H3 and 2, of course. Uh, and then like that's when we saw like the prevalence like of H1 and N1 like growing, growing higher. Very interesting. How about the um, nursery, uh, let's call it stocking dynamics? Um, when these pigs were weaned, were they weaned into all in, all out batches or was it continuous flow where that flu might continue to circulate? Yeah, so uh, that particular herd like was like a, a 2000 head nursery herd and they were all in, all out. Uh, but pigs were coming from five different cell sources. So they were mixed like from five different cell sources. Ah, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> what, were you able to see pretty significant diagnostic differences between the sow sources? Did, did pigs from specific sow sources have different infection dynamics than others? Yes. So we could have, so, so we had like this five cell sources and we were sampling those pigs like on a weekly basis. And we could, uh, and we noticed that like some pigs, like from a particular cell source uh, was getting like infected like before all the other pigs. So we knew kind of where the, f the virus was coming from and then was spreading like throughout like the whole barn. Hmm. That is, uh, that's interesting. And how many, uh, how often did you see the pigs shedding in the first sampling event? Was it common that pigs were infected very soon after weaning or did it take a little while before they started to test positive? No, like we had pigs that were positive, like at the first weaning, at the first week at the nursery, like right after weaning. How long did you see these infection dynamics play out? Because as I understand it, you tested all the way out to market age. Um, how long did you see the endemic influenza from the sow farm continue to infect pigs post weaning? Uh, we, we were, so we were saving like on a weekly basis at the nursery farm because it's easier to handle pigs, uh, like until they, they, they reach like the end of the, the end of the nursery phase. Uh, we were sampling them at them as well at the finisher, uh, farm because they were moved like, it wasn't like a wing to finish. So they had like a nursery and then they moved those pigs to a finisher farm. And, uh, so finding those pigs were kind of a, problem so we we sampled them like we tried to find like as many as we could and sample them like over time uh as well but like we didn't sample them like on a weekly basis uh but it's still we could see pigs that still had like uh sometimes like uh virus we could detect the virus but like we were looking also at like uh immunity and see if there were any changes like on their antibodies like based on what we saw in the nursery phase okay so you did some uh serology or some yes. antibody testing as well Yes. Did you see a pretty repeatable pattern with the individual pig where as the maternal antibodies would go down, eventually they would start to test positive? Or did you see some unusual situations in those early samples, the young pig samples, where they still had high maternal antibodies, it looked like, but they were also still PCR positive for flu? Um, yes. Yeah, so we, we know that like from previous studies that were done and also we could see that on our study that like maternal immunity can play like a role like on uh getting those pigs like uh infected like recurrently so we know that like maternal immunity like uh wanes by the 10 weeks of of age uh so we were seeing that like by the time that like the maternal immunity was going down we could see some picking on their active immunity uh and there was still like that uh, part of the the research like that that's being done like for other people and ours uh, that like uh, we think that like maternal immunity like plays uh, an important role in there saying okay I have like maternal immunity and like this maternal immunity doesn't let like the active immunity of the pigs like to act so they mm -hmm. don't have like their own uh, immunity going on so they just rely on the maternal immunity and sometimes they have like this maternal immunity for a particular virus and we have like another virus circulating or uh virus that are not like homologous to this to the immunity that they have so that's when we see like the whole thing going bad very interesting 
L-Biotics, the pioneer postbiotic for digestive health in pigs. Brought to you by Adair Biome. With over a century of experience in postbiotics for digestive health, L-Biotics contains heat-treated lactobacillus cell bodies and their metabolites. Stable by nature, L-Biotics can be easily stored and incorporated in compound feed. Juliana, I could ask you questions about this for the next 10 hours, and I still wouldn't feel like I understood it very well. Um, uh, for producers out there that don't have experience with co-mingling wean pigs, uh, they may be surprised that we spent that much, this much time talking about influenza dynamics and surprised by how, how much we see influenza post-weaning when you mix different sources and different viruses together. But I really appreciate your research. While I have seen this story we've talked about play out clinically with growing pigs many, many times in my career, I'm not, I, I'm not familiar with anybody else that's invested as much time into the longitudinal uh, testing program that you put in place. So I really appreciate you not only doing the work, but also coming on the podcast to tell us about it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's been uh, my pleasure. And uh, to our audience, thank you very much for joining us. If you haven't visited the Swine Health Black Belt podcast, please go check out our website. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on next week's episode. Uh, for Dr. Juliana Bonin Fajeda, I'm Dr. Clayton Johnson. Thank you very much for joining us and have a great rest of your day. Hey everybody, we're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.